Kotlin or Java for Android development? Which one should you use? That is the question. A little bit of background about myself. I did my master's thesis on security within the Android operating system, and I have done some app development, mostly in Java. So this is how the video is gonna go. First, we're gonna see how we got to the current state of things. Why are we even comparing these languages? Secondly, we're gonna compare the languages from a technical point of view. And finally, I'm gonna give my opinion on which language I think you should use. Before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like button. Let's try to get this video up to 200 likes. I know you guys can do it. So first, let's talk about Java and Android. So we have to go back in time a little bit. Initially, we had this language called C, and they wanted to add object-oriented programming to this. So basically, they just slapped on the ability to create classes. And it was even called C with classes, which they found out was a really lame name. So they later renamed it to C++, which sounds much cooler. And it was kind of an awkward implementation of object-oriented programming. Like the, the objects were really dumb and people were just complaining about its limitations. So in 1995, this guy at Sun Microsystems created Java. And it was really built from the ground up with object-oriented programming in mind. It was just a lot more intuitive. The objects were a lot smarter, but eventually Sun Microsystems was acquired by Oracle, giving Oracle the rights to Java. So fast forward a little bit, 2008, Google forks the Linux operating system and creates Android, which today Android is used not only in smartphones, but tablets, smart TVs, smart refrigerators. And even though the Android operating system is written in C as most operating systems are, the app development aspect of it was written using Java. And since Java natively doesn't have support for developing Android applications, Google developed the Android SDK, which allows you to create apps using Java. Well, Oracle didn't take much pleasure in this and they ended up suing Google. And this has been a nasty lawsuit that's been going on for like 10 years and is even still going on. So what has Google done in the meantime? Well, they're basically like, we need to move away from Java as soon as possible. And how they did this was by working with a company called JetBrains. Now JetBrains is a Czech-based company that develops tools for software developers. Their main product is IntelliJ, which is an IDE that's used for developing in Java. And what they did is they took IntelliJ, they made a fork of it, and created Android Studio. And this was really the first standalone app for Android development because before people had to use Eclipse and they had to add a bunch of plugins and it was really buggy and honestly it was just a nightmare to set things up. So the creation of Android Studio was a huge breakthrough and a huge leap for Android development. Now, why am I talking about JetBrains? Well, they're actually the developers of the Kotlin programming language. They developed this in 2011 and it's very similar to Java in that it uses the Java virtual machine. As we see here, initially in Java, you'd have your Java code. Your Java compiler compiles that code into what's called bytecode or dot class files. And now any operating system that has the JVM on it can read bytecode. Now Kotlin also compiles the bytecode. Basically you have your Kotlin code, it goes through the Kotlin compiler and then it ends up as bytecode. So it's not like you need to change your entire architecture if you wanna switch over to Kotlin. You really just swap out the Java code and the Java compiler, and there you go, you have Kotlin that compiles down to bytecode. And in 2019, Google announced that Kotlin will be the official language for Android app development going forward. So now that we're caught up with where we're at today, let's take a look at a technical comparison of these two languages. So the first difference is that Kotlin is null safe. So in Java, you can set your objects to be equal to null, but you have the possibility of trying to reference a null object and getting a null pointer exception. And honestly, this is really dangerous because you a lot of times you won't be able to catch this until runtime. And Kotlin was basically like, uh, uh we don't trust the programmers to do this. We're just not going to allow any of the objects to be nullable. There is a way to override that, but you have to do it explicitly. So this is one of the safety features that I really like about Kotlin. Next up, Kotlin gives you the ability to extend existing classes with new functionality. Now you can do this in Java, but if you want to, you have to create a new class, you have to inherit from that parent class, and then override your function there. In Kotlin, for an example, say we want to add a method to the string class. You don't need to create a new class for this. You can simply do string.lastchar to define a new method, 
And then going forward, every string will have that dot last char method, which will save you a lot of code. Say you just want to extend one function, you don't need to create a whole new class for that. One negative of Kotlin is that you don't have checked exceptions, whereas in Java, this is required, which ultimately leads to robust code with better error handling. Kotlin gives you the ability to have data classes. So if you just have a class that needs to store data and, and nothing else, you simply declare a class with the keyword data and the compiler takes care of everything like creating the constructors, the getters and setters, whereas in Java, you would have to explicitly write all that code. Kotlin also has type inference. So say in Java, you want to create an integer, you would have to do, okay, int i equals 10 or string s equals sam. In Kotlin, you can simply write something like var i equals 10, and the program is smart enough to know that this is an integer. So how could this be helpful? Well, say you have a variable and you want to set it to the return value of a function. Say later on you change the data type that that function returns. Well, you don't need to go back and also change the variable. Whereas in Java, any time that you do have that variable, you'd have to go through and change it to whatever data type you change the method to. All right, so what's, what's my opinion on this? Well, let's go back to 2014. Apple announced that they've released a new programming language called Swift. Now, up until that point, all iOS app development was done in Objective-C. And I remember people were asking, you know, like, what, like what's going on here? Are people gonna switch over to Swift? Is Objective-C gonna die? And people were like, should I even learn Swift? Cause you know, everything has been built in Objective-C. I don't know if everyone's just gonna transition over to Swift. And I remember thinking like, you know, Apple wouldn't, put resources into this if they weren't really serious about it. They're the ones that created iOS app development. If they want Swift to succeed, they're gonna be able to do it. And now we fast forward six years later, 2020, no one's really developing apps in Objective-C anymore. So I really think that something similar is gonna happen with Android. I think Google just wants nothing to do with Java anymore. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they stop support for Java you know, if you're a few years down the line. But you know, if you're new to Android development um, and you're already, you know, or if you're already good at Java, I would say at that point, just stick with Java. I don't really think it's worth it to learn a brand new language. However, if you're a professional app developer or you're trying to be, you know, why wouldn't you go the Kotlin route? Why wouldn't you go against something that, why wouldn't you go for something that Google is pushing for? So that's really my opinion. I would choose Kotlin over Java for Android development. But yeah, I would love to hear your guys' opinions. So let me know in the comments which one you think is better. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys found it interesting. Hopefully you guys learned something. I know I definitely had to look up some stuff with Kotlin and I learned a lot about it. And honestly, I, I really like the language and I'm, I might even consider studying it more and trying to get better at it. But as always, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and um, happy coding.